Okay. So we're going to talk today about adding and subtracting polynomials, and I hope you are familiar with the words adding and subtracting, but you might not be familiar with the word polynomial. Does anybody have a guess what a polynomial is? It's not Another number. It's like more than one monomial. So, let's we'll start off with the word poly. Do you know what the word poly means? Uh, more than one. More than one. Three? No, that's. Oh, I thought Polly was a type of flower. <laughs> I think you're thinking of a poppy. <laughs> when he asks the question, just make sure to raise your left hand. Yeah, just raise your left hand. <laughs> Polly means more than one. So um, a polynomial, uh, depending on who you ask, either means name, or I prefer to think of it as term. So polynomial means more than one term. So that's a pretty great explanation if you know what term means. What do you suppose the word term is? Yes? <laughs> Wait, what? Gosh. If you raise your left hand, that's, I don't know. Uh-huh. Does, any right right Does anyone know what term means? <laughs> Who knows what term means? Wow, look at that. Every single person has raised their hand. Well, since you all know what it is, there's no reason for you to tell me. I'll just write it down. <laughs> I think it's easier... <clears throat> For me to give you an example of what a term is rather than write the definition, here's an example of a term. There's one. Okay. Is it pause or is it? Here's another example of a term. There's one. What about the exponents? Yeah, what about the exponents? Here's one. There's a term. There's one. Yes. Is it any type of number or variable? Yes, but specifically it has to be um, a variable that has a positive exponent. So for example, not a term would be something like this. That's not a term. And since I can make that positive by moving it into the denominator, this also would not be a term. It's got to be something that has a positive exponent in the numerator. So those are not terms. So when I say a polynomial is more than one term, here's an example of a polynomial. <laughs> I can... There's an example of a polynomial. <coughs> How many terms are there in this polynomial? Yes, ma'am. Good guess. Two terms. Three. Three. Let's look at them. There's one. There's one. And minus 14 is also a term. It's the same thing as plus negative 14. So that's also a term. So this polynomial has three terms. Okay, what about this? It has two terms. Very good. What are they? Mm-hmm. And minus 9. When a polynomial only has two terms, you could call it a polynomial. We could also be really specific and call this a binomial. Bi meaning two. It would be unusual to do this, but you will occasionally hear a three-term polynomial called a trinomial. I guess it's not that unusual. But polynomials correct 
So is binomial. How about this? How many terms in that polynomial? It has one term, and it's called a monomial. The one term is 9k cubed monomial, because mono means one. It would, it would be okay to call any of these three things a polynomial, trinomial, binomial, monomial, just more specific ways of naming them. Yes, ma'am? Do they have to have a variable in them, or can they not have one? That is such a good question. Is that a monomial? Yes. Yes, it is. Remember, the first term I gave you was just plain old three. It can be just a number. That's an excellent question. This is also a monomial. And the term that it has is 5. Say that again? Are all numbers monomials? Any constant number. His question was, are all numbers monomials? And the answer is yes. Any, they're called constants, a number. Any constant is a monomial. And if I add a constant to a variable with a positive exponent, that would make it a polynomial, binomial, trinomial. So all this time, your whole life, you've been writing monomials and you didn't even know it. Oh, wow. So we're going to talk about adding and subtracting them, as I said. But before we can do that, we need to discuss one more thing with polynomials, and that is the degree of a polynomial. Got to discuss the degree of a polynomial. So the degree of a polynomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables in a term. Okay, so for example, if I were to give you x squared, the degree is 2. I only have one exponent in this problem. That exponent is 2. So we would say this has a degree of 2. Okay? But if I were to give you something like this, the degree is the sum of all of the exponents. So my x has a degree of 2. Y has a degree of 4, and use a calculator if you need to, kids. 2 plus 4 is, so this is a degree 6 polynomial. Very good. Not a polynomial, well, degree 6 monomial. Let's talk about polynomials, as long as we're on the subject. Ooh, lordy. Nice, that's, that's beautiful. Um, that's confusing. <laughs> I haven't even asked you a question yet. How can you say it's confusing when I haven't even asked a question? Uh, my question is, what number is in front of the x cubed? See, it's not confusing. That's not really my question. Um, I actually don't want you to tell me the whole degree yet. I want you to tell me the degree of each individual term. So the first term is 6x cubed. Can you tell me the degree of that? That's a third degree term. Oops. Okay. 4x, what's the degree of that? Yes, ma'am. 1. 1, very good. What about this other x over here? Plain old x. Yes, ma'am. Also 1. Now, here's my tricky question. What's the degree of 3? Do you know? 0. Zero. Very good. There is no variable, so there is no exponent on the variable. Now you'll notice that this is not a term. This is a set of terms, a polynomial. So the degree of the polynomial is the highest degree of the terms. So the degree of this polynomial is 3. <clears throat>
is the highest degree of the terms. I assume there's a more mathematical way to write that, but you get the idea. You find the degree of each term, and the biggest number is the degree of the whole polynomial. Okay, so why are degrees important when adding and subtracting polynomials? Because you can only add polynomials, or subtract them for that matter, if they have the same degree. Oh. The same degree. They, the, they do have to have the same base, so you're, you're right there. But for example, if I asked you to do x to the third power plus x to the second power, those cannot be added together because they are different degrees. x cubed is a degree of the three, and <laughs> x squared is a degree of so two. two. They have different degrees, so I can't add them. So if I said add these two together, combine these, your answer would be x cubed plus x squared. I can't combine them because they are different degrees. Now, uh, Peyton did raise a really good point. Oops. Peyton raised a really good point. She said, um, what if they've got uh, the same degree but the variables are different? She said base because she used the math word. Something like this. I'm smart. I can't combine those either. They have the same degree, but they have different bases. So the answer to this one would also be x cubed plus y cubed can't combine them. God bless you, my child. What I can do is add this. They have the same base. They're both x, and they have the same degree. They're both second degree. So, any guesses what x squared plus x squared is? Yes, ma'am. That is a really good guess. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Remember when we talked about our exponent rules a couple of weeks ago? When you multiply them, you add the exponents. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. What's x squared plus x squared? This is going to... Yes, sir? Two x squared. The answer is not 2. I'm sorry. 2x squared. That makes sense. I have 1x squared. I add another x squared. I now have 2x squareds. Yes, you can, you can bang your hands together when you do it also, I guess. You weirdo. <laughs> okay. Flex, Sign okay. language optional whenever you are adding them together. Weird flex, but okay. okay. Weird flex. Pink, pink, as the green. kids say. So let me give you um, what I can only describe as a unholy nightmare. Oh, that's beautiful. I forgot what's recording. That makes my eyes hurt. <laughs> really? That overwhelms me. It makes my stomach hurt. I'm having anxiety, wow. so that hurts. You, um, you two are drama queens. I'm sitting in bad spots. I can't feel my So, when I'm adding these together, remember I can only add the things that have the same degree. So look through this problem. I need the same degree and the same base. So I'm going to start with the first thing here, 2x squared. The base is x and the degree is 2. Do I have anything else in this problem that also has x squared? Yes. Yes, what is it? The negative, no, the 6x. Uh, no, you read the first time. See, that one also has an x squared. So I can combine those two things together. Okay, let's move on to the next term. I have a 5x. That has a base of... A base of, the base is, yes, Five. X. x is the base, and the degree is one. one. Do I have anything else in this problem with a base of x and a degree of one? Yes, ma'am? <laughs> the six x. Very good. And then finally, I'm going to deal with the numbers. Do you remember what the plain old numbers are called? 
No. It starts with a C. Mm -hmm. Starts with a C. Constant. Very good. Do I have any other constants besides minus 7? Yes, ma'am. The positive 3. The positive 3. So now I can combine all this stuff together that has the same base and the same exponent. So the x squareds can be added together. What is 2x squared minus 4x squared? Say it again. Very good. Negative 2x squared. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Well, Next, I'm going to add the... Sorry, question? But wouldn't the, um, ex yeah, the exponents also be 0 because you subtract them too? Uh, no, the exponents only change when you multiply or divide. When you add, the only thing that changes is the... It's called the coefficient, the number in front. Multiplication is when the exponents so change. Subtracted uh, negative 4 x It was 2 minus 4 is the math that we did there. So let's combine the uh, x's. We've got a positive 5x and a positive 6x for a total of 11x. Good. And finally, we will combine the constants. Say it again? Yes, very good. Negative 4. So my polynomial then is negative 2x squared plus 11x minus four. There's your answer. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Well, why are you raising your hand? Those are left hand. Which means I don't know. No, I thought they had left and right. If you if you say that again. Yes, the question that you didn't know the answer. Where did I lose you? Everything? Yes. Jeez. Which part's the most confusing to you? Which part you don't get? You combine the like stuff. The like stuff? Yeah, yeah like combine stuff. the like terms. The like things. The which is Oh, terms. Uh huh? It makes sense now. <laughs> the light bulb came on. I'm so confused. That makes sense. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the What? Okay. Why do you see what like a girl? What? I'm Okay, Zeke, I take back everything because I really do not want to do anything this I'm sorry. <sighs> that thing you do where you say stuff does not seem to be working out for you at the moment. <laughs> Okay, so let's see what terms we've got that we can combine. So I'm going to start off with the very first term, which is 3y. That has a base of y and a degree of 1. So I'm looking through this problem. Is there anything else that also has a base of y and a degree of 1? Yes, ma'am. 4y, negative 4. Very good, the minus 4y. Okay. Okay. The next term is the y cubed. Do I have anything else in this problem that is also y cubed? Yeah. Where? 2y. I got a 2y cubed. Amazing. Amazing. Next is minus 5. That's my Ooh. constant. Do I have anything else that is a constant? Yes, ma'am? Is it a minus 8? Is it a minus 8? Oh, plus 8. Plus 8, good. And then we're left with this poor guy. The 4y squared doesn't have a buddy. He's just going to be 4y squared all by himself. Poor thing. Okay, so let's put our terms together. So we've got oops, we've got a 3y and a 4y. That's a rainbow. Yeah. I mean, it's not in order. 3y minus 4y. We're getting to that, the order. Yes, ma'am? Negative y or negative 1y if you're nasty. <laughs> You're nasty. <laughs> uh, y cubed and 2y cubed. Yes? Very good. Uh, minus 5 plus 8. Very good. Positive 3. And then we've just got this poor little... 4y squared, he doesn't have anybody to combine with. He's oh, no. still just 4y squared. I know, he's so ronery. 
So um, the comment that Emily made was, uh, it's not in the right order. It's not in legal order. What is the... Oh, I thought you meant the numbers weren't in order. I thought you I thought you were about to give us a great mathematical insight. No. I didn't realize you were talking about rainbows. She said it's a rainbow, and I said it's okay. not in the right order. Well, then, you're Emily correct. It's not in rainbow order. Which is um, yes. Unless you're going backwards? No. It's backwards rainbow order. Not really. I mean, Blue, green, yes, yellow, red? Pretty. Okay. Yeah. Just Blue, green, yellow, red is backwards rainbow order. So if you're looking at a rainbow from the bottom, which is how all of us look at rainbows... <laughs> They're always above you. Sure. Unless you're driving. <laughs> okay, so I thought what she was going to say is they're not in the right order because when you write your answer, we start with the biggest exponent or the biggest degree and work our way down. So the term with the biggest degree is the y cubed. So our answer would start with 3y cubed. Then the next biggest degree is from the 4y squared, so positive 4y squared. Since it was positive, we put a plus sign. Yeah, it's not going by the then minus y, and finally plus 3. Blushy. 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 Oh, that hurt. Uh, could you please keep the sneezing down? Oh, We're trying to laugh here. Are you okay? No, we're trying to do nothing. I think my inside of my neck just exploded. Okay, can it explode quietly? We're, we're on YouTube right now, and I don't want you to mess up my video. We're going to go super viral, and I don't need you dying on my video. Oh, that would be so <laughs> <laughs> This is super viral. Dude, he already said that. <laughs> He's dying. There's the nothing worse than what you said earlier, no, so what is no <laughs> Why, what are you saying to me? Please don't start writing in pink. Oh, did I hear a request for pink? Yes! That's because he hasn't used pink like at all this far. And that is the weirdest pink ever. I love that pink. You should actually all pink are you should actually write all right. in that pink that you just highlighted. Let me give you a couple to practice on your own. <laughs> really? And then after you practice these and I can make sure you all know what you're doing. Um, we will um, learn how to subtract. Mm. I mean, we'll learn how to subtract polynomials. Hopefully, you know how to subtract. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> kind of if you don't know how to subtract, mm -hmm. then yes. grab Maybe a calculator. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, pack separate. I, mean, I, learned, I, learned Shh. I gave you some practice problems that did not involve bad mouthing your old schools. As far as I know. Oh, good. It is. Okay, so that was addition. Let's finish up today by talking about subtraction. Now, this is going to blow your mind. Subtraction has the same rules for polynomials as addition, except we're going to minus them. What? I know. Now, the tricky part is you'll notice that every single problem I've given you so far was in parentheses. How is a subtraction problem different from an addition problem when parentheses are involved? I'm really concerned about this subtraction sign right there. What is that subtraction sign asking me to do? Subtract everything in the parentheses. That is exactly right. So I'm not going to just subtract 4x. I'm going to subtract 4x, and I'm going to subtract negative, negative 5, and I'm going to subtract negative Now, you may be the kind of mental mathematician that can do that in your head and keep it straight. I am not that mathematician. I have to write out the distributive property. So that's what I'm going to do first. And I'm going to go ahead and um, drop the parentheses on the first one.
right? There's nothing outside the parentheses there, so I can drop those. And then I am going to write out what it looks like after the distributive property first before I combine my like terms. Because if I don't do that, I know I'm going to mess up. I'm probably going to mess up on the minus negative 5. I know if I try to do that without writing it down, I'm going to do minus 5 instead of minus negative 5. So I'm going to do minus the 4x. And then I'm going to do minus negative 5. Wait. Uh-huh. Can't you just do a plus 5? I absolutely can. Very good. What Peyton asked was, can you just do a plus 5 instead of a minus negative 5? Because that seems most complicated. Is she right? Can we write yes. it as a plus 5? Absolutely. And she said, I think it looks less complicated. And I agree. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that minus negative and just turn it into a plus right now. Now we're ready to combine our like terms. Some of you I noticed as I was watching you do the last one, instead of starting at the beginning of the problem with the three and going left to right, you started with the highest exponent so that when you wrote it, it was already in the right order. And I think that's really smart. That's a good time saver. So look at this polynomial. What's the highest degree that we have? Yes, ma'am. Two x squared. Good, so the highest degree is two. two. Do we have anything else in the problem that is also degree 2 with, with a base of x? That one. Yes, ma'am. 3x squared, negative 3x squared, negative 3x squared. There we go, negative 3x squared. Okay. All right, somebody besides Ellie and Peyton, what's the next highest degree? Yes? <laughs> negative 2x. Negative 2x. Do we have any other uh, x friends in here? Negative 4x. And then, Christian, I saw your hand. Bring it home. What's the last thing we can combine? 5 and 3. Very good. And when Catherine was solving these problems, she just said, I'm going to start with the biggest exponent so that it's in the right order, which is really smart. So we're going to do that. So, Catherine, when I combine the x squareds, I'm picking on you because it's 2 minus 3. <laughs> When I combine them, what do I get? Uh huh. There we go. Now I can write negative 1x squared or just negative x squared. And I'm going to do that. Negative x squared. Okay, so that's. Oh, Emily, I can't believe you didn't gripe at me for not writing it in the correct color. There's my blues. I'm going to write it over the blacks just to give Emily anxiety. There we go. It's perfect, right? I Can't even that. see the black. <laughs> Thank great. you. It's wonderful. Uh, Zeke, ow, ow. what do I get when I combine the X's? Mm -hmm. What is the constant? Negative 2 minus 4? Negative six. There we go. So minus 6x. And then... Oh, well, we Uh-oh. Zeke, we lost her. Uh -oh. See, why, do, why, do I, why is negative 2x or negative 4x negative 6x? Zeke. Why? But 4 minus 2 is 2. Yeah. But it's... Into, into the negative. So if I if I subtract right. a negative from a negative, I actually add them together. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> I, I can't okay. remember that. That's that's right. I think so. Yeah. That's exactly okay, so. what you did. I'm glad you got it right. Okay. You got it no, right. No, wait, wait. See you stop, tell me that. Stop. Okay. Stop. All right. I was like, oh. Did you throw a chair? Did you see a brick and break the wheel? Okay, last thing to combine. Anybody? Yes? Eight? Yes. And it's a positive, so positive eight. And if you do it this way, if you do it like Catherine did, where you start with the biggest exponent, we're done. That's the answer. It's already in the correct order. So it would be negative x squared minus 6x plus 8. Is there anything else in this problem I can combine? No, that's No, because... Because the negative 6x does not have a, a, does not have an exponent of 2. 
which means they have different degrees. Exactly right. Let's do one more together, and then I'll give you a handful to practice. A handful. A handful. A generous double handful. Handfuls so big that I have to balance them against my chest so that I don't spill them everywhere as I'm walking out. You know what? I'm gonna. I can already hear Emily griping about my handwriting on that exponent right there. I better try again. Thank you very much. You didn't even say anything, but I could feel the anger. Yeah. I noticed it right as you were about to get rid of it. And I was like, <laughs> Surely he's really not going to leave that. Even though it's totally something that you would do. All right. Definitely going to have to pick on Harley, Lizzie, Dakota, and Andrew this time. <laughs> I'm looking at Andrew's face. He's like, oh, great. Mm -hmm. Just pick on me. <laughs> what program is this you're using? Um, this is called, um, I'm writing in Notes, which is an app that is uh -huh. comes on my iPad. And then I'm recording it using a piece of software called Air Server, which um, I don't think we have in our school mm -hmm. laptops. I purchased that myself last year so that I could record it. And so whenever I'm done, I'm going to use my tablet to email the notes to everybody, including the kids that are absent, and I'm going to post this video on um, YouTube. It's in the link to everybody so they can watch it later. So, the reason I was asking is because I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, I want to rag on you really quickly. Uh-oh. The way that you're using the color to show them how this goes with that, you know, okay, mm -hmm. you were, look at me, I'm very old, there was no color, <laughs> and nobody wanted to use colored chalk when I was a kid. Mm. That was so easy for me to understand the way you've got the color blocking going on, and I didn't know how you were making that happen, and now I understand. And yes, that makes the world look round. It also helps us. Yes, yes. it does. Yeah. 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 Excellent, excellent. Thank you for coming off? to get me. Oh, it's off. Please remember in the future, any comment I'm not where I'm supposed to be, at least send someone to find out if I have sure. forgotten you or if I have gotten myself sure. into it. No problem. Okay. All right, children. Are you working this or are you working that? Oh, he's not working on the same thing you're doing. And he does not take the EOC. Algebra. He took it last year. So, I'm going to leave the first set of parentheses alone. Whoops. Our Miss Parker people have five minutes. Okay. The first set of parentheses I can leave alone. Second set of parentheses, I got to do a little bit of work. Because that minus sign means to subtract everything in the parentheses. All right, go ahead. Okay, so you know how the... Uh, <clears throat> the no, I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> the uh, minus sign is between the first equation and the second equation? Those aren't equations, but yes, I know what you mean. Okay, why doesn't the, the minus sign go to the other side? Uh, that's a really good question. She's asking, how come the minus sign only goes to the second set of parentheses and not the first set of parentheses? It's because it's a subtraction sign. I'm only subtracting the second thing. I'm not subtracting the first thing. Like, I, would, I wouldn't say it's 5 minus... I would say 5 minus 3. I wouldn't say, when you do 5 minus 3, why don't you subtract the 5 and the 3? You only subtract the thing that comes after the minus sign. Same thing here. I only subtract the thing that comes after the minus. So I'm subtracting that whole second set of parentheses, which means it's going to be... Negative 3p to the second. Good. Minus 2. Mm-hmm. Plus 9p. Oh, very good. Yeah. Plus 9p. Someone who is not Peyton oh, yeah. or Emily, explain uh, why is it plus 9p? Or what, plus 9, sorry. Oh, no, that was right. Plus 9p. Yes, sir. Very good, because it's minus a negative, which is the same thing as plus. Okay. So now that we have this done... Let's combine some stuff. Somebody that I haven't picked on. Dakota, can you tell me two things I can combine? Very good. I can combine the 7P and the 9P. Um, Lizzie, can you give me something else I can combine?
Do those have the same degrees? What power is 4p raised to? What's the exponent on 4p? And what's the exponent on 3p? Can I combine those? No, because they have different degrees. So, round two, Lizzie. What is something I can combine? Very good. The minus 8 and the minus 2. All right, and as we just discussed, the 4p cubed does not have a buddy, and the minus 3p squared does not have a buddy. So those are going to have to live by themselves. So let's start with the biggest exponent and work our way down. Biggest exponent is the 4p cubed. Oh, I keep doing that. Sorry. 4p cubed doesn't have a buddy, nothing to combine him with. What would come next? Yes, ma'am? Good. He also doesn't have a buddy. He does not have anyone with him. Reminds me of my eighth birthday. So next would be the 7p and the 9p. No, no, you, you've already singled yourself out, so clearly we have to go to Andrew. 7p plus 9p? 16p, very good, sir. And then uh, Harley, I'm sorry to say you're the only one I haven't picked on, so you get the, you get the last little bit, negative 8 minus 2. Excellent work. Oh, yeah. So, um... You're right. I haven't. You're right. I haven't picked on Bit. Well, Bishop's not taking algebra, but I haven't picked on him. So how can we include Bishop? So there's my answer. And uh, Bishop, what what color should I highlight my answer in? Okay. Thank you. See now everybody participated. <laughs> Good job, Bishop. Good job, Bishop. Down for yourself. <laughs> Where's Ray? Yes. Wait, okay. was that for you or for Evelyn? That was for him. So okay, but you requested either, so I didn't know if it was to you or to both. Let me give you two subtraction problems to practice, and then I will release you from the clutches of mathematics until Monday. Do you mean until, in just like the, our only problem? Stop, don't. He's oh, give us an assignment. you're right. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I'm no, just I was stop. I was with Clearly I'm, I'm just out. kidding. Do you think I would ever forget to give you math to do? Yes. That's... Yes, I was hoping. You were hoping you were hoping that while I was writing a math problem, I would forget to give you math problems. Yes. That is you know, I admire your optimism. You're welcome. Yes. Do those are notes or this? No, in your notes. In your notes, I want you to do these two. So I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a.